one Sabbath as Jesus went, was going through the wheat fields, his disciples were picking the heads of wheat, rubbing them in their hands and eating them. Some Pharisees said, why are you breaking the Sabbath law? Jesus replied, haven't you read what David and his companions did when they were hungry? He broke the law by going into God's house and eating the bread of the presence, which only the priests can eat. He also gave some of the bread to his companions. He said to them, the human one is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, Jesus entered a synagogue to teach. A man was there whose right hand was withered. The legal experts and the Pharisees were watching him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. They were looking for a reason to bring charges against him. Jesus recognized, Jesus knew their thoughts, so he said to the man with the withered hand, get up and stand in front of everyone. He got up and stood there. Jesus said to the legal experts and Pharisees, here's a question for you. Is it legal on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? Looking around at the mall, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. So he did, and his hand was made healthy. They were furious and began talking with each other about what to do to Jesus. During that time, Jesus went out to the mountain to pray, and he prayed to God all night long. At daybreak, he called together his disciples. He chose 12 of them, whom he called apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphia, Simon, who was called a zealot, Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Jesus came down from the mountain with them and stood on a large area of level ground. A great company of his disciples and a huge crowd of people from all around Judea and Jerusalem and the area around Tyre and Sidon joined him there. They came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases and those bothered by unclean spirits were healed. The whole crowd wanted to touch him because power was going out from him and he was healing everyone. Jesus raised his eyes to his disciples and said, happy are you who are poor because God's kingdom is yours. Happy are you who weep now because you, sorry, happy are you who hunger now because you will be satisfied. Happy are you who Happy are you who weep now because you will laugh. Happy are you when people hate you, reject you, insult you, and condemn your name as evil because of the human one. Rejoice when that happens. Leap for joy because their ancestors, because you have a great reward in heaven, their ancestors did the same things to the prophets. But how terrible it is for you are rich because you have already received your comfort. How terrible for you who have plenty now. Nicole, there's dolphins out there. For you will be hungry. How terrible for you when who laugh now because you will mourn and weep. How terrible for you when all speak well of you. Their ancestors did the same things to the false prophets. But I say to you who are willing to hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on the cheek, offer the other one as well. If someone takes your coat, don't withhold your shirt either. Give to everyone who asks and don't demand your things back from those who take them. Treat people in the same way that you want them to treat you. If you love those who love you, why should you be commanded? Even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, why should you be commended? Even sinners do that. If you lend to those from whom you expect your payment, why should you be commended? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. Instead, love your enemies. Do good and lend expecting nothing in return. If you do, you will have a great reward. You will be acting the way children of the Most High act, for He is kind to ungrateful and wicked people. Don't judge and you won't be judged. Don't condemn and you won't be condemned. Forgive and you'll be forgiven. 
give and it will be given to you a good portion packed down firmly shaken and overflowing will fall into your lap the portion you give will determine the portion you receive in return Jesus also told them a riddle a blind person can't lead another blind person right won't they both fall into a ditch disciples aren't greater than their teacher but whoever is fully prepared will be like his teacher Why do you see the splinter in your brother or sister's eye, but don't notice the log in your own eye? How can you say to your brother or sister, let me take the splinter out of your eye when you don't see the log in your own eye? You deceive yourselves. First, take the log out of your eye, and then you will see clearly to take the splinter out of your brother's or sister's eye. Good person. A good tree doesn't produce bad fruit, nor does a bad tree produce good fruit. Each tree is known by its fruit. People don't gather figs from thorny plants, nor do they pick grapes from prickly bushes. A good person produces good out of the good treasury of the inner self, while an evil person produces evil out of the evil treasury of the inner self. The inner self overflows with words that are spoken. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? I'll show you what it's like when someone comes to me, hears my words, and puts them into practice. It's like a person who built a house by digging deep and laying the foundation on bedrock. When the flood came, the rising water smashed against that house, but the water couldn't shake the house because it was well built. But those who don't put into practice what they, what they hear are like a person who built a house without a foundation. The flood water smashed against it and it collapsed instantly. It was completely destroyed.